the supposedly pro-life party has been saying a lot of really um, troubling things lately for a party that is so concerned with the health and well-being of other human beings. Because at a White House press briefing, Donald Trump admitted that he's willing to endanger the lives of Americans just to make sure we protect the stock market. He literally said that. And after he made this comment, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick of Texas went on Fox News in an interview with Tucker Carlson and basically echoed that same sentiment, saying, yeah, I think we should let old people die to make sure that we protect the profits of private companies. Now, every once in a while, Donald Trump will say something that's bizarre or unhinged. He'll get pushed back, and then he'll kind of walk back that statement. But he's not doing that this time, when we really need him to do that, when we need him to reconsider. Desperately so. Because he doubled down in an interview on uh, Fox News, and he said that not only is he willing to do this, to actually send people back to work, resume business as usual, regardless if people die, he's going to do it really soon. How soon? By Easter, which for those of you who don't know, is less than three weeks away. Take a look. During our town hall today, you threw out a date where you think America can be working again. And that's Easter Sunday. Yeah. That's 19 days from now. How did you come up with so, that day? Well, it's 19 days, but add another seven because we've been doing this now for seven. So that's from the time we heard about it. Seven to nine. From the time yeah. we, yes, so from the time we, we close it up. So you could add seven to nine. Uh, look, Easter's a very special day for me. And I see it's sort of in that timeline that I'm thinking about. And I say, wouldn't it be great to have all of the churches full? You know, the churches aren't allowed, essentially, to have much of a congregation there. And most of them, I watched on Sunday, online. And he was terrific, by the way. But online is never going to be like being there. So I think Easter Sunday, and you'll have packed churches all over our country. I think it would be a beautiful time. And it's just about the timeline that I think is right. Yes, because packed churches is certainly the most beautiful thing that I can think about during a global pandemic. Like, this is absolutely irresponsible, borderline psychopathic, if not full-on psychopathic behavior. People are going to die. Those packed churches are going to be disease-spreading factories where COVID is going to fucking spread. Like, what are you doing? People who go to church disproportionately are the base of the Republican Party, elderly people. So they're more than willing to sacrifice their own base all to protect the gods of capitalism, to make sure the stock markets are doing okay, to make sure that the gears of the economy just uh, keep turning. This is so morally reprehensible. Like, anyone who votes for a Republican, their boomer base, acknowledge that they're talking about you. You're disposable to them. They're willing to sacrifice you to protect profits. Your life doesn't matter. So if you voted Republican, you've been duped. Now, the good news is there's still time to change it. But your votes for Republicans may have doomed us all. So if we weather the storm, right, there's a lot more that we have to deal with as a species because of what capitalism has done to our society climate change. This probably won't be the last global pandemic that we see. Um, we have to clean up the mess that this party, which is basically a death cult, has made. So stop voting for them. Now, this isn't surprising because we already knew that this is what, you know, Republicans prioritize. They put the profits over the health and well-being of people. It's always profits over people. That's all they care about. But what is honestly surprising to me is the fact that they're saying it so explicitly. Like, I expected them to just hint at this. I thought Republicans would use doublespeak or maybe accuse us of being hyperbolic when we actually call out their agenda to just let old people die to protect the profits of big business. But they're not even trying to hide their agenda. In fact, they're excitedly vocalizing to the world that they love this idea. So many Republicans are coming out in droves to say, yeah, you know what? If old people are going to die... I think that's fine so long as we protect the economy, which is a thing that we made up as human beings. Like, do you understand? Like, the economy, money, these things have no value without human beings there to value them. Do you understand that? But they don't care. They're willing to kill off their entire base to appease their corporate overlords 
and I'm sure boomers will still happily vote Republican. So let me just give you a few examples of what Republicans have said in order to really vocalize their support for Trump's plan to send everyone back to work and endanger their lives. So right-wing radio host Jesse Kelly tweeted out, if given the choice between dying and plunging the country I love into a Great Depression, I'd happily die. All right, well, nobody's stopping you. But if you actually meant that, put your life at risk. Go bag groceries. Go ring up people. Be a cashier. Swap out your job for a cashier who probably would have a better talk show than you have. Like, actually do something that would make you vulnerable. But they can say this, and it doesn't mean anything because they're not vulnerable. They're protected in their studios. I know, I can stay home talking to my microphone and it's fine, but I worked retail before. I know the germs that people spread firsthand. They cough into their hands, use the credit card machines. It's absolutely disgusting. And these people who are ringing up groceries, healthcare providers, they are putting their lives on the line. And you're saying it's worth it? And you die? No, you don't mean that. You mean that you'd let the peasants die, not yourself. We all know if push comes to shove, that's what they're talking about. Now, another Republican idiot, Candace Owens, decided to chime in uh, with a platitude that Republicans often use. My freedom! She tweeted, To the frauds claiming we need to shut down society to protect the elderly World War II generation. World War II generation. We will die before we give up our freedom. This generation. We will give up every single one of our freedoms before we risk dying. Cowardice dressed up as nobility. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. Wear your masks. Give up your rights. Stay at home. But stop hiding behind the generation that gave you all of your freedoms to do it. Just admit that we are a coddled, fearful, egocentric generation of weak men. I'm sorry that people aren't willing to die for some abstract notion of freedom, but forcing people to work just to make sure that we protect the profits of industry, that doesn't sound like freedom to me. And I'm sorry, but this whole notion of freedom, if we're going to accept that that's what we're talking about, because freedom is irrelevant, she brought that into the conversation, freedom means nothing without people being alive to partake in said freedom. I mean, you have to be alive to be able to enjoy freedom, or any freedoms. If you are dead, you cannot enjoy freedom. If you are dead, you cannot contribute to the economy. And she says that we're hiding behind this generation. Um, so, Republicans are basically saying, let's sacrifice the lives of old people, mo mostly, to make sure that there's no recession. And... When we say no, don't kill people, you call us cowards, but yet you still claim to be pro-life? Like, you have to pick a side. Either you're pro-life or you're pro-death. The Republican Party has always been a pro-death party. They've been the party of death and destruction. They are the party that is absolutely the biggest cheerleaders imaginable for capitalism, right? So, I mean, like, we're speaking out trying to protect our loved ones, right? We oftentimes will be angry with boomers for ruining the economy and voting for Republicans and corporate Democrats. But at the end of the day, these people are our family members. They're our grandparents, our parents. So by us speaking up on their behalf, we're not the ones who are cowards. You're the fucking coward, Candace Owens. And again, these people can talk a really big game when they don't have to leave their homes. They don't have to actually go to work for a real job. They just have big fucking mouths, they talk into a microphone, and they can say whatever they want without consequences, and, you know, act as if they're, you know, they'd be noble and would sacrifice their own lives to save the economy, when in actuality, these cowards are talking about the peasants, not themselves. Now, it's funny because Glenn Beck said the same thing. He said, I'm willing to sacrifice my own life to save the economy. And just watch, I'll tell you why this is so idiotic, coming from him of all people. Uh... I want to have a frank conversation with you and and ask you where you stand. I I mean, I'm in the danger zone. Uh, I'm right at the edge. I'm 56. In Italy, they're saying if you're sick and you're 60, don't even come in. So I'm in the danger zone. I would rather have my children stay home and all of us who are over 50 go in and keep this economy going and working even if we all get sick i'd rather die than kill the country because it's not the economy that's dying 
It's the country. You know, the happy music just doesn't really seem appropriate for the morbid, borderline genocidal conversation that he's having. But the reason why this isn't necessarily applicable to someone like Glenn Beck is because one, he's rich, so he's going to have access to the best healthcare in the world uh, that money can buy. And two, because he works in a studio. Like, if you're not going to work with the public, if you're not putting your life on the line, Shut the fuck up. You can't talk about I'm willing to die for this country. If you talk into a goddamn microphone, and this is why I find these right-wing radio hosts so insufferable. Like, they've never had a real job. These are the real coddled pricks, and their parents probably went to Ivy League schools, you know, bought them an education. They never had to work in retail. They never had to have a real fucking job. So it's so easy for them to say, you know, I think old people should die. I'm old. But you're not going to be affected. It's going to be the peasants. And you're an elite. So shut up. But I mean, Glenn Beck isn't the only one because Tom Fitton of Judicial Watch said the same thing. I'm sorry. If it comes down to the economy and uh, killing old people, we're going to opt for killing old people. I appreciate the efforts of the public health officials, uh, but uh, you know, Dr. Fauci, for instance, was saying it could be several more weeks before we get the country open again. That can't, that can't, that simply can't be allowed to happen. We've got to get the country moving again. It's the only way to rescue the economy. And frankly, when it comes to the long-term public health of the nation, a strong economy is the best way to protect it. And it doesn't mean you can't take significant steps and continue significant restrictions to secure the public health, whether it be at the border or internally. But we've just got to get people moving back to work, back to school in a regular, organized way while taking into account the public health risks. Because I don't want the cure to kill the patient, which is what I'm concerned about. He doesn't want the cure to kill the patient because that's somehow worse than the disease killing the patient. These people are so stupid so painfully fucking stupid but you know i honestly i shouldn't call them stupid because i think they know what they're doing they're smart smart enough to know what they're doing they're trying to rile up their right-wing base and get them to accept what their party is about to make them do send them to work endanger their own lives and basically die to protect wall street so if you buy into this against your own self-interest very explicitly they're not hiding it I don't know what to say. You're just stupid. If you vote Republican after them explicitly saying we don't care if you die, you're just fucking stupid. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. If a party told me that I was loyal to that they don't care if I live or die, then I would stop supporting that party. Maybe you should too. Maybe you should rethink your vote for Republicans after they're now telling you very explicitly that your lives don't matter. And uh, think about this. Think about how easily they're willing to just throw their base under a bus to protect the profits of private corporations. And they're going to do this, right? Because we're not talking about this. We're not having this conversation in week 13 or week 14 of quarantine. It's week two. Week two, and we're already talking about this. So brace for impact, prepare for disaster because they're going to do the unthinkable. They're going to send people back to work, resume business as usual, and if more than a million people die, estimates say two million, fuck it. There's money to be made. So that's what we're going to do. Now, some of them, some Republicans, are already resuming business as usual. For example, Jerry Falwell Jr. is reopening Liberty University this week and ordering all faculty members back to work. How many of them are immunocompromised? How many of them are elderly? I mean, what a pro-life move to make. Like, these people are the biggest frauds ever. They are pro-life only insofar as they're able to weaponize the pro-life issue to help them win elections to then fuck you over economically. Now, I want to share some responses that I thought were just perfect for this. Bree knew some base had the best response, I think. She said, everyone arguing that 1-2% to of the population dying isn't a big deal needs to identify one or two close family members or friends that they are willing to offer up to death in this moment for capitalism. Name them. Say their names out loud and speak it into the universe with the same ease you condemn others to death. That is exactly it. Candace Owens, if you think that old people should die, are you willing to sacrifice your grandmother or your mother to capitalism? 
Glenn Beck, are you actually willing to die for capitalism to protect the profits of Wall Street? You're going to go uh, volunteer for a homeless shelter? You're going to go uh, bag groceries? You're going to name anyone in your family who you think is worth uh, killing to protect the economy? Like, this is what we should force them to do. Because we all know they're not talking about their loved ones. They're talking about our loved ones. The individuals who are disposable, just cogs in the machine, who bag our groceries, you know, who box the things that we buy from Amazon. That's who they're talking about. They're not talking about themselves. They're not talking about elites. They're not talking about oligarchs. They're not talking about the ruling class. They're talking about you and your loved ones, your grandma. Now, I want to share a tweet also from Natalie Shore, who provides us with some much needed perspective. She writes, if you're rightfully irate that Republicans are now openly asserting that they'll trade lives for points on the Dow, please know that this moment represents a difference of degree, but not kind, and that this exact calculus is baked into the very structure of capitalism. Perfectly put. Perfectly put. This is the result of capitalism. We're in late stage capitalism where we've stripped away all of the regulations and now we've unleashed the beast and, you know, capitalism is like a bull in a china shop. It's just wreaking havoc and we're just sitting by and watching it destroy everything. And even if it literally starts killing people at a higher rate to where people know what's the cause of their death, Oh, well, we've already unleashed the beast. You know, there's no putting the cat back in the bag. We've opened Pandora's box. And now we just have to uh, wait until it destroys us and hope that we can somehow restart society after this apocalypse. I mean, the situation is so grim. And, you know, let me just say this to the Democratic Party frauds who are trying to um, capitalize on this. I think it's smart. But, for example, Joe Biden tweeted out that we shouldn't sacrifice people's lives just to make money or help the stock market. But this is an individual who said he would veto Medicare for All as president, which is a policy that saves 68,000 lives per year. This is an estimate that comes from Yale University, not Mike from the Humanist Report, but Yale in a peer-reviewed study. So, I mean, nobody in this system will have your back. He's doing this because he has donors in the healthcare industry. Republicans have donors on Wall Street and that's why they're willing to push everyone out, push them all back to work to make sure that you get the economy running for them so they can continue to live like kings and queens while you die to make sure that, you know, the wheels keep turning. Well, I say to hell with that. You should reject that. It's time for a general strike. If the government isn't going to stop the economy, send people home, then it's on us to shut this motherfucker down, call for a general strike, shut everything down, because if government is going to tell us that we're so useless, we mean so little that we should die to save Wall Street and big business, we have to stand up for ourselves. You have to acknowledge that your life has value, your life has meaning, and no, you shouldn't endanger yourself to protect your employer or your landlord or the Republican Party or Wall Street. Your life has value. And I know that capitalism has kind of brainwashed all of us to get us to think that the most important thing is profits. But your life has value. It's time to deprogram, get out of that cult that is capitalism, and have a general strike and take matters into our own hands.